life and God will give you the glory. And Lord, when we turn the lights out tonight and go home, we'll say it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. We'll thank you for what you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, I'm going to use this mic here. Uh, let's get our Bibles open this morning. We're going to have a little uh, lesson here today on something I think uh, would help every person here. We'll start in Romans chapter number 12 uh, in your Bible. Everybody knows that famous scripture there in Romans 12. And I'm going to give a, uh, we're having a little lesson this morning on uh, how to know the will of God. How to know the will of God. A little basic, a little basic lesson. Some of you some of you mature giants here this morning have all, you know, this will seem elementary to you, but it should help all of us and uh, encourage us because sometimes, sometimes the will of God ain't always easy to figure out. Uh, there's, there's some things that it's obvious, plain as day, the will of God for everybody. And I'm going to show you some of them this morning. But um, there, there's, God has a general will for everybody that's saved. In other words, there's certain things that God's will for us all, no, no ifs, ands, buts about it. Where it, gets, where it gets hard is God's individual will for your life and my life. Little daily things that we do or don't do and big plans for life, like who you're going to marry, where you're going to live, what your occupation, education, stuff like that is major, major important. Now, if you're a serious Christian, if you if there's a serious bone in your body as a Christian that's going to cross your mind once in a while, what's the will of God for me? What am I, what am I doing in my life? So let's look at Romans 12 and uh, verse, verse 1 this morning, and, and I think 1 and 2 will, I'll read. And I'm going to have some of you men to help me. So Brother Mike, I want you to get that Romans 12, 1 and 2. Stand up and read it real big and real loud, and everybody follow him. Now listen to this. Go ahead. Amen. All right. Now, there the Bible says that we are to do the perfect will of God for our life. I've had bukus. That's a Greek word. It means a bunch um, of people ask me, uh, uh, preacher, how do I know God's will? How, I've had, I wouldn't believe the people I've said, how did you know God wanted you to be a preacher? How did you know God wanted you to start a church? And, and those are legitimate questions. We've all asked them, and life is short, and it goes by fast, right, old people? All us old people, huh? it goes by fast. You ain't got time to flounder around, flop around, and, and try to figure out the will of God. You better get it in your 20s or before. You better find the will of God for your life in your 20s or before, or you're fixing to go down the wrong path. You wake up at 40 or 50 or 60 one of these days and think, oh, my goodness. What in the world have I done? I've wasted all these years. And uh, and that old song, Wasted Years, Wasted Years, oh, how foolish. But there's a lot of people that sing that song if, if the truth is known. Now, the will of God's threefold. I've told you, I tell you, there's certain things that are the will of God for everybody. Um, uh, Brother Derek, I want you to get First Thessalonians 4, 3. And um, uh, Brother Randy, why don't you get us one? First Thessalonians 5, 18. He's going he's gonna to get his, and he's going to get his, and uh, we'll, we'll get these couple of verses in here this morning. And uh, these, there's certain things that is the will of God for everybody. All right, brother, you got yours? Go ahead, brother Derek, real loud. All right, plain as day. Anybody got any questions with that? It is the will of God that you keep yourself morally pure. You don't have to pray about it. You don't have to say, well, God sent me this person and we're in love, so it's, no. There ain't nothing to pray about. No matter how you feel, if 35 angels come in your room one night and said it's the will of God for you to shack up, you, you can say, you can go back to hell where you came from. That's what you can say. You say, I couldn't tell an angel that. If he said that, you can. 
Amen? If an angel said that, you can tell him that. Tell him to go back to hell where he came from. Uh, yeah, listen, that's, it's not, that, it is the will of God. Ain't you glad God gave us a Bible? Because nowadays people question everything. Um, see the bumper stickers, it's question authority. Uh, you know, uh, you, you question crazy people is what you need to do. Uh, they're the ones that need to be questioned. But uh, that's the will of God. All right, Brother Andy, got yours? Real big and real loud. All right, got that? Plain as day. Plain as day. And everything give thanks. This is the will of God. Well, I don't like all this stuff that happened to me. Well, it ain't the will of God to gripe and complain about it. The will of God said in, not for, in everything give thanks. So if I'm having trouble, I'm having burdens, I'm having problems, in that I am to give thanks. Lord, Things ain't going too good right now, but thank God you've been good to me. It's like the last three Sundays we've had rain, snow, two snow Sundays in a row. I don't know if I ever remember it snowing. Maybe a long time ago. Sundays in a row like that. It's been awful. Been awful. The weather has been absolutely awful. Boy, this morning we got up, the sun shined again. And guess what, glory to God? You want to shout? Tomorrow, a week from tomorrow is March, y'all. And it's supposed to be in the 60s this week. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, my wife, Kelly, this morning, bless her heart, she was up uh, probably at 6.30 taking showers, and at 7.15, 7, this morning, she was making hot chocolate, put it in a big old cooler, and took Frankie and Molly and all them, and, and Ethan went on it, and they went on the bus that left this morning with a three-year-old, and now it's 27 degrees. And I thought, you know what? If you'll do what you're supposed to, and it's hard like that. Listen, I mean, I, I, she's my wife, and I'm, I'm bragging on that, buddy. That's something to brag on, no matter who does it. Amen. There she is, right there. Don't tell her I've been talking about her. But, but uh, thank God, thank God, somebody's, somebody's willing to do something for God. Thank God, people, it's willing. And you know what? If you'll do stuff when it's hard, the sun's gonna shine again. The sun's going to shine again. I'm telling you, the sun will shine again. And the Bible said that. So let's talk about how you can know the will of God. You say, well, Brother Danny, how did I know the will of God? Look, two or three little quick things right here, and I'll give them to you. Number one, here's how you know the will of God. Who are you supposed to marry? Where are you supposed to go to college? Or if, probably not. Uh, uh, where are you going to live? Da, 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 da. Big decisions. Big decisions. Listen, if you think you're smarter than God, you're a fool. You think, well, I know God won't, but I think I, you know, you're, that's, a, that's the height of dumbness. Dumbnity, that's another Greek word. Uh, uh, that means you're crazy, buddy, if you think you know better than God. Number one, here's how you know the will of God if you lie. Number one, pray till you have no will of your own. That's the hardest part right there. That's the hardest part. Everything we go into like that, usually we already have one way in our mind we want it to go, right? You see a car you like. You see a house you like. And, and in your mind you think, man, I hope that's the will of God. And, 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 and you pray or you see a, a, a person you want to date or maybe possibly marry or something like that. And you think, ooh. That's the will of God. You know, <laughs> yeah, a lot of them said that. And, and later said that was the will of the devil. Uh, yeah, yeah, so so you, you, you usually go in there and say, and you say, now I know which way I want this to go, but God, not my will, but thine be done. That's the hardest. I've wanted something before, and I said, will. And it better be this. You know, in my mind, that's what I'm thinking. That I'm just going to finally talk him into giving me what I want. And I, I keep praying and keep praying and keep praying and keep praying. And I can finally get to that point where I say, all right, it don't matter. I'm too stupid to know the future. I'm too dumb to know what's, I don't know what's coming down the road. You do. So I'm going to leave you 
this choice with you. And he's like, man, I'm scared if I do that, he won't let me have what I want. Maybe he won't, but you'll be glad of it. Pray till you have no will of your own. That's the hard part. If you're serious with God, pray until you have no will of your own. In other words, you pray until you can get to the point where it don't really matter to you which way it goes. God, your will be done. That's half the battle right there. That's half of it. The other three things are the other half. That's half the battle, y'all. You, 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 you see a car you want? We all do that. You see a house you want? You just imagine yourself in that car. <whistles> you start thinking, well, my payments is only $798.22, and I draw $799 a month, so I can afford it. And you try to you try to just you try to get in your mind. I can do it. I can stretch them pennies. And you forgot it has to have tires and insurance and inspection sticker and tag. And you forget all that stuff, right? Uh, and uh, you 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 try to convince yourself that this is the will of God. Now I'm gonna help some of y'all if you'll let me. This in this in this class here, we we have a, some mature Christian. We have baby Christians in here non-Christians in here, in this class. So I'm starting basic stuff with you. You better pray until you don't care. You get your heart right. You get your heart right. Honestly, I, I envy people that just automatically know the will of God for everything. Honestly, I question them. But I, you ever met these people? They have no struggle with it. They have no problem with it. Well, I prayed and the Lord said do them. Well, I prayed and the Lord said do them. I've never, that's never happened to me like that. I'll wrestle around and finagle and, and contemplate and negotiate and in my head. And I'm saying, well, what if I do this? This might happen. If I do that, that might not happen. But if I don't do that, that might happen. And, uh, and you'll drive yourself crazy like that, trying to figure out what God wants you to do. But that's, I, I envy anybody that can just say, Lord, what will thou have me to do? Do this. Thank you, Lord. And uh, there's people that give you that impression that they got this hotline <laughs> with the Lord and they're just hooked up, you know, and every, everything they, I've met, I've met a lot of people say, well, I was praying God told me to come down here and you know, oh, it's never been that easy for me. As a matter of fact, there's been very few times in my life when I was 100% sure about anything. You say, brother Danny, you're our pastor. And every big decision I've ever made in my life. And when I make a big one, they, they turn out to be right. But I drive myself crazy for months and sometimes years trying to figure out what they are, what to do. And I've never have, I've heard people say, I know 100% I'm supposed to do this. Maybe you do, praise God, I'm happy for you. But I've always been about 90. And there's always that 10% of doubt. Are you sure about this? You sure you know what you're doing? But if I'm 90% sure and it's, and it stays that way, Eventually, I just go ahead and jump out. It's like this. You're getting ready to jump, jump in the swimming pool, and ain't no water in it. You say, by faith, Lord, I'll jump in that pool. But could you put a little water in there first? Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> when you put that water in there, I'll jump. And it don't usually, the Lord usually wants you to jump first, and then there's the water. You say, well, what if you don't put no water? You bust your brains out. That's why you're supposed to pray. That's why you're supposed to, that's why you're supposed to uh, well, there's Dr. Bennett. Where'd he come from? Uh, uh, no, pray until you have no will of your own. Secondly, secondly, listen, listen to this. Write this down in the fly leaf of your Bible. It'll come in handy one day. Seek guidance through the scriptures. Seek guidance through the scriptures. In other words, a lot of times you, you'll read the Bible and, and, and it, it keeps popping up, popping up. Now, the Bible's not a Ouija board. The Bible's not a magic. It's not a, it's not a crystal ball. The Bible, the Bible. And you don't just say, God, show me what your will is. That just said, Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, is it true, O Shadrach? Uh, you know, and once in a while, it, you might hit it like that. That's not the way to find out the will of God. You've heard my illustration so many times, you should know it by heart. Man said one time, he said, oh, God, show me what to do. I looked at and said, Judas went out and hanged himself. He said, oh, my goodness, no, Lord, please, Lord, please, show me what to do. And he opened it up and he said, go thou and do likewise. 
And he says, oh no, oh God, please no, please don't. He said, one more time, Lord, show me what thou doest, do quickly. Bam. See, that's the way it happens when you start playing with the Bible like that. You don't play with the Bible like that. It's not a crystal ball. It's not a magic board. It's not dice you roll. But you can have guidance through the scripture. You can. And then I'll tell you something else. Seek guidance through other Christians. Sometimes another brother or sister in Christ will come up and they'll have just what you needed. Give you an example. My, when I was getting ready to start shining up Baptist church, I prayed for months and months. And I said, God, is it your will? Is it not your will? Is it your will? Is it your will? And I was just that close. And I was just about, you know, I'm just about ready to say, okay, Lord, I'll do it. And one day my phone rang and it was a preacher friend of mine down in Gastonia. His brother Wayne Reese. And me and Brother Wayne had been friends for years. And Brother Wayne said, Brother Danny, God wanted me to call you. And I said, he did. What does he want? What does he, he said, he told me he wants you to start a church. That's the honest truth. And nobody ever called me and told me that. I said, he did. He ain't told me for sure, but I'm thinking about it. He said, God wants you to start a church. Now, he said, it's off of me now. I've done my job. You do what you want to with it. And he hung up. And the Lord used that. He sort of pushed me a little bit. He sort of pushed me. Now, there have been people told me stuff that I don't believe God told them lots of times. But when everything lines up, your prayers, the scripture, your friends, the people you're close to, most of the time, if people you're close to are strongly advising you against something, you might ought to be careful. Now, they might just try to be protect you, and I'm not saying they're always right, but seek guidance to other Christians. And then seek guidance through providential circumstances. What does that mean? Well, stuff just happens sometimes. If you say, Lord, is it your will for me to have that car? I'm going to go down there tomorrow and make that man an offer. Okay, and you walk down there the next day and say, I'm going to make you an offer on that car. He said, we sold it an hour ago. That's providential circumstances telling you it probably wasn't the will of God for you to have that car. Uh, you say, well, what if it was God's will and that other guy come in? God, that, that is a possibility, I reckon. But obviously, if that house burns down, you're not supposed to buy it. Uh, there are certain things that are plain as day through providential circumstances that you probably shouldn't do it. Now, that's a hard question because uh, one of the hardest questions of life, and I've been doing this a long time, and I've, I've studied preachers, and I've studied church, and I've studied the Spirit of God. I mean, I've studied this stuff backwards and forwards and back down through the middle, y'all. And I know preachers, great preachers, the best preachers it's ever been. I've either heard them or read what they said. And they said, the hardest thing to figure out is, is this the devil trying to stop me or God shutting the door? That's one of the hardest things you'll ever try to figure out. Is this just the devil trying to stop me? Or is God shutting this door? You get the answer to that and figure it out and write a book and you can get rich. Uh, but then the last thing is seek guidance through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's a gentleman. He will lead you. He will impress you. And he will, he will guide you. And then when you get ready to make a decision, say, should I go this way or should I go that way? Then you go ahead and after you've done all this other stuff, you pray and say, all right, Lord, I feel in my heart this is the way you'd have me to proceed and start down this direction. And if you continue to have peace about it, go. If you start down this direction and the Holy Spirit said, no, 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 maybe you ought to back up and rethink it or go the other way. Now, I'm not saying drive yourself crazy trying to figure out the will of God. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is you better seek it. And if your heart's right, God will bless you for it. All right, let's pray. We'll have another song. Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for being good to us. I pray the will of God for every single person here in my personal life, my life, uh, Kelly, Ethan, Molly, Frankie, my, my girls, all their kids, the family, our, our church family here. Lord, I pray the will of God for every single person here. Now do what ought to be done today. Do great and mighty things in the preaching service. We'll continue on in Jesus' name.